Now let's talk about blood clotting. Hemostasis is the ability of the body to stop bleeding when damage happens to a blood vessel. So hemostasis is just the word that's referring to blood clotting taking place. Blood clotting, this is a picture of a blood clot, um, ends up in producing this network of fibrous fibers. <laughs> And um, there are four major steps involved in this taking place. The first step is just that there has to be some type of damage. That damage is actually what's going to initiate this whole process to take place. And then after damage occurs, what would happen is vasoconstriction. We, we mentioned this when we were talking about platelets earlier. When we introduced platelets, we said that they can secrete serotonin. Serotonin causes vasoconstriction. So this is going to reduce blood flow to the region. And then finally, uh, while that's going on, there's going to be what's called a platelet plug. This is going to um, involve the, the proteins that are present in the blood. They'll work together to form this web of protein. And along with the platelets, that is going to form a clot, which will help to prevent blood loss from that region. So to understand how all of this works, to get into step one, what we need to do is talk about a healthy blood vessel wall. Uh, so an intact blood vessel. So no problem yet. Let's just take a look at the normal layout of things. So inside of our blood vessels, there is endothelium. And that endothelium um, does some very important things. Number one is just that it's providing a separation from the blood out here on this side. Um, it's separating the blood from these collagen fibers. So collagen fibers are right underneath that first, that, that layer of cells, the endothelium. And that's very important. If collagen comes in contact with blood, that is considered damage. And that's the thing that initiates clot formation. So number one, in an intact endothelium, there is a separation between the collagen and the blood. The other thing that intact endothelium is doing is it's secreting a couple of things. It's secreting um, a prostaglandin, it's called prostacyclin, and it's also secreting, secreting nitric oxide. And this is just a normal process in sort of maintaining blood flow to that region. Um, these things also inhibit platelets from sticking together. So it helps the platelets to stay as individual platelets in the blood. CD39, this is something that is present in uh, the plasma membrane of these cells. CD39 is a substance, here it is depicted over here. CD39 is an enzyme, and what it does, just ordinarily, um, is it breaks down ADP molecules that it happens to find in the blood. Um, so adenosine diphosphate, right, ADP. It breaks it down into its um, components, inorganic phosphate and adenosine monophosphate. And the reason that it's doing that, or one of the important things about um, the fact that it does that, is that this also helps to keep platelets in an inactive state. So ADP, it turns out, we'll see this a little bit later, ADP is something that platelets can use to message each other and cause them to get sticky to each other. Um, so we wanna keep those levels low unless we actually need a clot to be forming. So the intact endothelium is doing these very important things just to maintain things and, and not cause clotting to take place. Let's switch gears now and look at when there's damage. So if there is damage to this endothelium, to some of these cells, um, then suddenly the collagen fibers are now exposed to the blood. When collagen is exposed, uh, the platelets bind to it. The platelets find it very sticky, and so they stick to it. And um, there's this other factor, von Willebrand's factor. This helps to really adhere them in place to the collagen. So remember, we're talking about a blood vessel. There's blood flowing through all the time. Um, that blood provides a shear force, which might strip the platelets away. But this VWF, uh, this factor helps to just sort of cement them in place, hold them more securely. So once they are stuck in place, there's a cascade of events that's going to take place. The platelet release reaction is referring to this cascade of events. So platelets that are bound to collagen, um, particularly that is the event that initiates them to secrete serotonin. And remember serotonin causes vasoconstriction. So this blood vessel will, um, the, the blood supply to this area of the body will be decreased as a result of this. The other thing that the platelets are doing 
is secreting thromboxane A2. This is a prostaglandin. Um, this is another thing that causes vasoconstriction and it also makes the platelets a little bit sticky. ADP is released okay, by these, let me get my laser pointer, ADP is being released by these platelets that are a stuck to collagen. Um, and that ADP is a very sticky substance. It makes other platelets come over and stick as well. So it's recruiting additional platelets to this area. In the end, this platelet release reaction produces what's called a platelet plug. This is the start of a clot. This isn't a complete clot yet, but it's the beginning of it. So a whole bunch of platelets have piled up to this region. Next, what happens is that um, these activated platelets, they cause um, proteins in the blood to convert into an active state. So fibrinogen is the protein that we mentioned earlier, in the first video in this chapter. Fibrinogen is one of the proteins, plasma proteins, that's just always present in the blood. And ordinarily it's present in a soluble form, so it's just always kind of in circulation throughout the bloodstream. When the platelets are activated, they cause fibrinogen to convert into another form called fibrin. Fibrin is insoluble. It is no longer dissolved in the blood, rather it's kind of precipitated out. So fibrin is something that the platelets then bind to, and uh, this, is, this fibrin is what ends up forming this sort of mesh, this network, um, which then other platelets get stuck in. So this is what we would call a, a clot. This is a network of fibrin and also platelets together. A lot of times, red blood cells happen to get trapped in this as well. Um, as far as we know, they're not really doing a specific job in clot formation. They just kind of happen to get stuck in the network as well. And so this is what makes clots, if they're on the outside of the body, this is what makes clots look kind of that red color. It's because there are red blood cells stuck in it. Um, if we look internally, sometimes there are clots that form internally in blood vessels if there's been damage. A lot of times the clots in the larger arteries, um, they do not have that red appearance. And we think that that's because the blood flow is just much greater in those internal large arteries. The blood flow is really fast. And so the red blood cells don't really have a chance to get tangled up in this mesh. The, the shear forces are just too great. It keeps the red blood cells moving past. Um, so clots tend to look a, a little bit more of a gray color if they're inside of a larger artery. So once a clot is formed, um, this again, this is preventing blood loss from that region. This gives some time for repair mechanisms to be carried out right there locally. And it is important to note, clots are temporary. So once the repair um, is complete, once the blood vessel wall has been repaired, then the plasma is going to be um, the plasma, the clot is going to be degraded back into the plasma. So there's an enzyme that helps to do that. Um, plasmin is the enzyme um, that gets activated in that case, and it just digests away these fibrin, this fibrin network, and the clot dissolves. There are certain pharmaceuticals, certain drugs that can be used to prevent clotting, and this can be an important thing in certain situations. Um, if you have someone who is um, who is perhaps bedridden or if they have a low heart function, so if their heart is not functioning properly and circulation isn't quite um, w what it should be, then clots are more likely to form just because the blood tends to sort of pool in certain areas of the body. And so a clot might form just for that reason, not necessarily because there's damage, but just because the blood is sitting still for too long. And that can be extremely dangerous to have clots forming internally. So there are drugs, there's heparin, there's coumadin. Um, these, there are different drugs that act at different stages of clot formation, have different mechanisms for preventing clots. Um, but those are available as pharmaceuticals for preventing clotting.